Hello everyone, so we are going to start now the uh, third and final module of this um, image processing series uh, where we'll be talking about image segmentation and to start off we will uh, look at uh, histogram based uh, thresholding methods so the goal of image segmentation is always to, um, to find some uh, object of interest in the image and we will want to label every pixel in the image based on whether it's part of the object of interest or not <coughs> And with histogram-based uh, methods, uh, thresholding methods, the, uh, the idea is to only use the uh, value of a given pixel, and of, of that given pixel only, to, uh, to determine whether it's part of the object of interest or not, uh, independently of the values of, of, of its neighbors and of the rest of the, of the, of the image. Um, and so, of course, this uh, only works if, if we have a direct connection between um, the uh, grayscale uh, image and the object of, uh, of, uh, of interest. So if, for instance, we are trying to uh, segment an object where which has both um, very light uh, values and very dark values uh, in it, then it will, uh, we will never be able to find it with uh, this kind of, of, uh, of methods. Um, but um, typically, these kinds of methods will be part of a larger pipeline, which will include first some uh, form of pre-processing, uh, where we will transform the image so that typically uh, the w we can get this direct connection between the pixel values and the uh, object of, uh, of interest um, in a way that we can afterward threshold it. Uh, and also, very often, we will need some post-processing afterwards because um, these kinds of methods tend to be uh, very uh, noisy in the result that they, pr that they produce, will often have uh, some uh, holes in the object of interest, will often have some isolated, isolated pixels uh, everywhere else in the image which are uh, badly labeled. And this is where techniques such as uh, morphological filter that we have uh, seen uh, previously uh, will be useful to help us get a, uh, a cleaner result. Um, so the first method that we are going to look at is just manual thresholding. That's something we've already done in previous video. We will just look at the image and at the histogram to determine um, what a good threshold might be um, to accomplish the image processing task that we are trying to do. So let's um, go to the, to the notebook. And first, um, here I am loading uh, a fairly simple uh, image, so that's one that, that I've used in the uh, entropy uh, video. Uh, just to illustrate. Um, so this is just the start of the uh, article on entropy by uh, Shannon. And uh, here it's already almost a binary uh, image, but it's uh, grayscale. So we have uh, some values that are not at 255 of zero or zero, uh, especially, uh, so typically at the, at the border of the, of, the, um, of the letter. So we see that there is some, some form of, of, of gradient uh, be between the letters and the, and the background. And so one task that we might have in, for instance, uh, uh, an OCR, so optical character recognition um, processing task, um, would be to first uh, segment this image so that we uh, have uh, a label for all the letters and a label for the background. And the difficulty that we will have um, here is that we want something that will uh, label the letters well, so that where we have the, the entire letters uh, in the in the label, but we also want to uh, make sure as much as possible that um, first of all we don't have holes in the letters, but also that the letters are not uh, connected uh, with each other, so that we can still uh, separate them. And we can see that, for instance, if we zoom in on some of those um, of, uh, some parts of the image, that we have non-zero, uh, so non-white uh, non values that connect uh, different letters together at some part of the, uh, of the image. And so that will be uh, part of the, uh, of the challenge in such a segmentation task, will be to try to avoid as much as possible uh, these, uh, these problems. So it's not necessarily possible with just thresholding uh, to do that. Uh, and that's why, again, uh, typically it will be part of a larger uh, pipeline. So the first thing that we generally do when looking at a um, manual thresholding uh, task is to first look at the at the histogram, and so in this case we can see, as as we've seen, that uh, this is al already an almost binary image. We have a peak at zero for all the black pixels, a very large peak at uh, 255 for the um, 
purely white pixels and we see some very very uh, small peaks um, at other values that show that there are still some a few pixels that don't have uh, this value. If you want to see it a bit uh, more clearly, we can choose to just look at the pixels that are not uh, equal to 255. So look only at the non-white pixel to see the distribution of black and gray uh, in the uh, in the image. And here we can see, so we have a very large majority again for the pixels that are not purely white, a very large majority of, um, of pure black pixels, but we still have uh, um, a fairly uh, large uh, number of pixels that are uh, neither um, uh, 0 nor 255 and which can go a bit everywhere in the spectrum. So what would uh, a good threshold uh, be in, in, in that case? Um, well, here it's it's a bit hard to say from the from the from the distribution. We can see that we have those uh, those two uh, huge peaks at zero and two fifty five, but we don't really have any reason to to think at first that uh, that one threshold is better than another. So let's just try uh, somewhere in the middle. So we could um, say that in the the binary uh, image would be a threshold at, for instance, 200 and, uh, uh, 127, so right in the middle of the, of the spectrum. And here, so the threshold is uh, this operation here where we say we want to keep as part of the objects of interest, so the letters, will be every pixel where the value is under 127. And so we can plot that result. And so here, when we now evaluate whether this uh, worked or not, uh, we can again take a look at uh, so uh, the letters. And we can see if the letters seems to be uh, mostly uh, mostly complete. So we can see that there are some pixels that are missing that might be part of the letters, but mostly it seems uh, to be um, to be okay for that. Um, but we can also have a look at uh, those uh, regions. Uh, where we knew that there were some uh, some pixels close together. Yeah, we can see that the, the, the numbers don't seem to be uh, fully formed, but that's uh, also the case uh, if, we, if we just look at it uh, directly. So they, they were not uh, completely formed here, so it's normal that we don't find them uh, in here. And uh, if we look at uh, those parts here, we see that here we do have a connection that remains uh, in here and maybe in here as well. So we do have some letters that are, um, that are together. So we could try to, um, to avoid that by uh, putting a lower threshold. So for instance, if we put a very low threshold, like let's say uh, 40, then we will, um, we will separate the letters uh, better. So this one still remain, but I think if we look at this one, we don't have the direct connection anymore. Um, but the uh, drawback of that is that no, we ha we don't have the uh, the letters uh, fully formed anymore. So this will always be kind of a balance to find um, between the between uh, making sure that we have the entire objects and avoiding um, putting um, objects uh, together. So if we take a higher threshold, we'll take more of the of the letters. And in this case, we can see that. All of the letters are very well uh, formed, but uh, we'll start uh, adding some uh, some bigger connections between uh, some of those uh, letters. And so that's where we kind of have a choice uh, when we are designing uh, an image processing pipeline as to whether we prefer to uh, to have something that might overestimate uh, the, the 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 shape of some of the of the letters and create those connections and deal with those connections afterwards in post processing, or if we prefer to have something that um, that will uh, have a very low threshold to 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 begin with that might uh, have letters that are uh, split in different parts and reconnect those in post processing um, in some way. So this is. Uh, really part of the uh, designing uh, process um, and uh, that's even as we can see here for relatively uh, simple uh, cases such as this one um, 
if we look at um, a slightly more uh, complex case, we can look back to uh, something that we've done in the previous video, which was uh, the video on uh, distance in color space. Um, and what we had done there is, so the pre-processing, we were starting with a, an RGB image, we converted it to uh, HSV, and we computed the distance map from um, a reference color that we took in the sky, and we computed the distance in color space from that, uh, that reference color to every other pixel in the image. So that's the, the, the pre-processing that, that we've done to create this connection between um, the goal that we had, which was um, segment the uh, ground from the uh, water and sky, um, wa wa was to um, convert the image into a, um, a distance from blue uh, color map. Um, and uh, with, we, we, with that, we looked at the, uh, at the, at the histogram, uh, so this distance from uh, blue uh, histogram, and we saw that there were two clear distribution with two uh, large uh, peaks. Um, and we said, okay, looking at that um, distribution, we probably should cut somewhere in between the two large peaks, and we had chosen a um, threshold of 0 0.4 to uh, get this, um, this mask between uh, the two uh, distributions. Um, so here we can see the uh, problem of um, noise that, that is very common in these kinds of, uh, of algorithms, where we have uh, many isolated pixels here uh, in the in the sky and uh, some holes here in the um, in this part uh, of the of the image, uh, and so this is where we could try to to clean it up uh, using uh, morphology. Um, so if, if from um, the morphology module of Scikit Image, we can import um, the uh, opening, closing, and disk uh, method, and we could say that uh, our mask so typically will combine an opening with a closing. So let's do opening of the mask by a disk of some, uh, so that, that's a value that should be adjusted by uh, looking at the results uh, afterward. Um, so let's start with a disk of five pixels. Um, and if we do that, um, we can see that we really clean up uh, the, um, the, 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 the mask. Um, and we, we have something that uh, might be over or underestimating, depending on the context, uh, the, uh, the, the object of, of interest. Um, but uh, that will be a lot, a lot uh, cleaner, a lot less noisy, and therefore it will make it uh, probably easier to, for any uh, post-processing that we want, or any measurement that we want to do on the um, on the image afterwards. Um, so, in the that's kind of the idea of um, segment segmentation using the the thresholding in the histogram uh, in general. In this case, so using some uh, just manual uh, thresholding. And in the next videos, we'll see some ways of uh, automating the uh, choice of the uh, threshold. Uh, so that's it for this video and I will see you in the next one.